my god. Guys, oh my god. Oh my god, I am- you- oh my god. <laughs> As you can tell, I just finished watching the live stream for, uh, well, as of this recording, I just finished watching the live stream for Star Wars Episode Nine, and that was the first time I ever did something like that. I was actually like, yeah, I so want to see what they have for Episode Nine that I'm willing to sit through a whole live stream, through all of it, and just watch the trailer. And the live stream, real quick, was actually not that bad. It was actually a pretty good, um... It was actually a pretty good uh, story in of itself. It was actually a lot of fun to watch all these characters, these actors get together for one last time because this is the end of the St Skywalker saga. It's not the end of Star Wars. It's just the end of Skywalker of, of the Skywalker story. And I have to say, I was very impressed. I was very much having a lot of fun. And also, can I just real quick talk about how non shitty the Star Wars fans were? Just how like non. Just non-shitty they were as a whole. Just in no way, shape, or form. They were essentially just not being total dicks. Like, when Kelly Marie Tram, uh, the actress who plays Rose, who got nothing but hate from dickbags in in, in, for Last Jedi for doing nothing wrong, um, she essentially got nothing but just cheers and standing ovations the whole time, and it, she broke down in tears, and I was like, oh, you guys are the good guys. And then, like, the people were singing happy birthday to, Ray, to Daisy Ridley, Ray's actor, uh, Ray's actress. Like, they were singing happy birthday, and she said, hey, it's a great birthday present. And then out of nowhere, all the fans just started singing happy birthday to her. Oh, and I was like, you guys are really what the Star Wars fandom is. Not those di uh, those uh those bit dick bags in in on the internet. Yeah. So, uh, without further ado, let's actually talk about the tra the teaser trailer. Wow. Um. So it looks like a few years have gone by. Um. A few, like, uh, they haven't really, they didn't really disclose of how far into the timeline, the Star Wars timeline they went into, but what they did, but it does look like it's been a while since, um, Last Jedi. Like, it doesn't look like it's going to be, like, episode 7 and 8 where, um, the story is just going to, like, hop, skip, and a jump to something else. Like, it's, but this looks like there's some time in between. Now, in here, it does look like the... Uh, characters are, you know, they've grown into their own life, you know, they've grown in their own lives, they've clearly, you know, learned a lot, and I love that opening scene where Rey is just, uh, just has that lightsaber out, and, you know, and we hear this TIE Fighter sound, and we know it's Kylo, we know Kylo is just roaring down the, <laughs> the freaking, I, what, we don't know if it's Jakku or Tatooine, all those desert planets look alike, let's be real. And he is just coming at her at full speed, and Ray is just ready to fight. I I dug how we have Luke's uh, over, you know, voiceover throughout the whole thing because it does feel like an ending, and it's basically telling you know the fans, hey, thanks for coming on this trip with us. It was nice of you. So I really dug that. I really dig dig um, how that how that all played out. Um, there was also some great scenes of, like, seeing Billy D. Williams in the Millennium Falcon with Chewie, and I was like, Billy D, Billy D! <laughs> um, because I love Lando Calrissian, I don't care what anyone says, I really dig that character. Um, definitely one of the stronger points of uh, Han the Han Solo movie was Donald Glover's performance of, of Lando. So, it was nice to see Lando get a lot of love, it was really cool to see him, uh get a lot of love in this film, as well as in the live stream. He was, he is still as smooth as he was back then. I, I will tell you right now, he is still as smooth as he was back then. Um, I also really dug how these, uh, how it really feels like the stakes are high. Like, you see these big battles, you get to see more A, it's nice to see the A-Wing back. Um, I loved all these, the, just the scenery J.J. Abrams, while I do have my, you know, my problems with Episode 7, I still think that, though, you know, 
I still think those scene setups and some of it are just breathtaking. And it looks like that's going to be the same here, where this could actually get um, an Oscar nomination for at least cinematography. I think it might at least be in the running for cinematography from just this teaser alone. Don't quote me on that, I'm just saying. Anyway, uh, but we also get to see more of Kylo. We see the helmet reforged. We also see him like killing some a resistance member with the handle of his, with the handle of his of lightsaber that you know little handle of his lightsaber just bringing it down on somebody. I think we also get to see a brief glimpse of the Knights of Ren, who it does look like the Knights of Ren are finally going to play and do a role into this. So I'm really excited to see the Knights of Ren after them being hyped up for the past th two movies. It'd be nice to see them finally. And what they could do, you know, how strong they are, what what are they capable of. I'm excited to see where that could go in and of itself. Um, I also just just love the the film, the aesthetic of it. I just love looking at all of this. This is how a teaser trailer is, and then the uh, the unexpected happened. Like the total unexpected happened. And it's kind of funny, before I go any further, this is a big thing, guys. This is a major thing we got to talk about. So, in the tra- you know, before in, in the live stream, they were talking about uh, this ultimate evil they'd have to face. And I was like, oh, Snoke's back. Okay, I like Snoke. That's a- he was an interesting villain. Maybe they'll do more with him. I wish his death meant something. But then at the end of this trailer, we hear a familiar laugh from a familiar Sith Lord who ruled the galaxy for 30 years. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Emperor Palpatine, Darth Sidious himself, has returned from death. Yeah. Now, if you are an e like a previous EU fan, like a, you know, the previous uh, Extended Universe fan, then you know that this is nothing new for Emperor Palpatine. Palpatine, in the original continuity, in the Dark Horse continuity, I mean, managed to survive death via clones and implanting his soul into these bodies. He even attempted to do this with, I believe, one of uh, Han and Leia's kids. Uh, I think it was J it was Anakin Solo They he was trying to do this with, but yeah. So yeah, Palpatine has escaped death so many times, he's like a goddamn cockroach. But yeah, I didn't think for one second that they were going to bring Palpatine back. I didn't expect that. Now, for those who don't know, Palpatine is actually my favorite Star Wars character. He's one of my favorite villains, period. And my, like I said, favorite Star Wars character because of just how, like, he won. Like, you know, no villain gets to say, I won, and hold on to that power for as long as he did. Um, yeah, he did lose, and now it looks like he's back. And now I'm wondering how he's come back. That's the big thing, is like, how the fuck did you come back from that? Um... So, yeah. Could it be that they're gonna take, like, the cloning route? Or are they going to take, like, a different route with, like, more force? Has he become, like, actual dark side energy? Or has he learned an ancient Sith maneuver? The other thing is, how in tune is he with Kylo? That's the other thing we have to look at, is that... How, like, how has he affected Kylo, and has he been the real master manipulator with the First Order? Because, remember, in the new canon, Operation Cinder and the survival of the, of the, of the remnants of the Empire becoming the First Order was all part of Palpatine's plan. And Palpatine is a dude who has plans within plans within plans, and a B plan that has plans within plans within plans. So... The dude knows his shit. Let's not forget that. So it could be that he planned all this, but how does where does this leave Snoke? Where does this leave Supreme Leader Snoke exactly? Because he was very powerful in his own right, and was he working with uh, Palpatine? Now remember, Snoke was the one calling out to Palpatine in the in the um, e new EU, like the new Disney canon EU. So yeah, Snoke is obviously going to play a role in the Emperor's. Hand, you know, the Emperor's, uh, uh, you know, whatever that was. But the main thing is, has Palpatine come to take the throne from Kylo and turn him into a real Sith, or has something, or is this something else? So, yeah, I'm excited, and it's kind of funny, because I was like, there's no way they're going to bring the Emperor back for this, there's, there's no way, no, nope, Emperor's back, and I'm excited, and I want to see how this goes, because I know some people are like, how oh, the Emperor come back? 
You clearly don't know Sidious. You don't know Sidious, alright? You don't know Sidious. So, guys, god damn was this a great, you know, this is great. I gotta be real with you. I, this was just phenomenal to see, um, and see this trailer, Rise of Skywalker, um, I wish, uh, I'm not, I'm not feeling the title yet, but maybe it'll grow on me. It wasn't like with The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi where I was like, yeah, that's cool. Rise of Skywalker feels a little too fan fiction -y, if I'm being honest, but maybe it'll grow on me. So you guys tell me in the comments below, what do you guys think of this teaser trailer for Episode Nine? Are you guys excited or are you guys not? Well, how do you think it's going to play out and how do you think the Emperor has returned? Just comment below, let us know, and we'll see you right here in the universe.